Hey everyone, welcome back to Liz from McDIY. So recently I did a makeover on my daughter Caroline's bathroom and I did it really inexpensively on a budget. So I wanted to share it with you. Everything I did was under $400. Here is the before of our bathroom. This is a Jack and Jill bathroom that my younger daughter uses. This door over here goes into our guest room and then this goes into her room. And I'm going to keep a lot of things. We're just going to kind of update the look of everything. So I'm gonna be painting this down here. Um, I do need to come up with some system for her jewelry. And then back here is kind of that long hallway. So I'm going to have to come up with something here. Um, this is where we currently store all of our bows. I don't know if we'll be keeping them there. And then of course she needs a new shower curtain. It's pretty sad. So that's how the space looks now. So the first thing I'm gonna do is just kind of clear everything out of this space. After that, I'm going to paint the ceiling. It's not my favorite thing to do, but it really needs it in this room. And if I have time today, I'm also going to prime the walls. You guys know I'm a mom, so I will be picking up, I think I have like three hours right now. So I'm gonna see how much I can get done in those three hours. I'm going to remove the cabinet doors and drawers so that I can take them out to my garage and paint them. Before I start painting, I'm going to add in spackling on the holes in the walls just to repair the holes and I'll sand it down so they're ready for painting. So I'm going to trim the ceiling with an angled brush. I find an angled brush is great for the edge and it works a lot better than a flat brush. Next, I'm going to just use a roller and paint the rest of the ceiling with my roller. Okay, I just finished the worst job, which is painting the ceiling. I don't like doing it, but I think if you do it first, you'll get it all done. And it really didn't take me that long to do. Next, I'm going to move onto the walls. And in a bathroom, I really like to prime my walls. Lately, I found this new primer called Gripper and I love it. I think it works great on cabinets, but it also works well on the walls as well. So I'm gonna do one coat of this on my walls. Next, I'm going to paint my walls white and then later I'll add a, another color to the bottom. And the paint I purchased was from Sherwin-Williams. Next, I'm going to turn my attention to the cabinetry. So the first thing I'm gonna do out in my garage is I'm just going to remove all of the hardware. Next, I'm going to use that same gripper primer to prime my cabinets. So what I like to do is use my same angled brush and I get in the inner portion of the cabinet
Then I come back with my small roller brush and I just roll it on, making sure it looks as smooth as possible. Next, I'm going to paint my cabinets a really pretty gray color, and I like to do two or three coats. With your cabinet doors, you're gonna paint one side, flip them over, and paint the other side as well. And even when you get them installed later, you may have some touch-ups that you need to do. Just make sure you allow a good amount of time for each coat to dry. Since this is a little girl's bathroom, I wanted to add in some touch of pink to it and have a fun finish. I considered doing wallpaper, but I didn't wanna do that in a bathroom. So what I decided to do was just a fun, easy paint technique. And it honestly looks harder than it is to do. So let me show you how I did this. So the first thing I did was just take a tape measure and I measured up 48 inches and I marked it with a pencil. I went over about maybe 10 inches, marked it again, and I did that all the way down on my wall. From there, I just took a flat surface and my pencil. I'm just going to draw a line connecting all of those points across so that I have a nice straight line on my wall. Next, I wanted to make some scallops with a half circle. So you just need to get something that's a circle. I used a lid from a cottage cheese container. And what you wanna do is mark it on either side. It's really important to have those lines because those lines are going to sit on your straight line. So just put your circle on those lines, making sure that the side uh, marks match up with your line, and then you'll just draw a circle. You'll move it down and repeat those steps. If you have that line in place, it'll just help you go down. Now, when I got done with this, I thought, well, I could have just cut this in half and had a half circle. So that probably would have been easier. So just find something that's a half circle and repeat it all the way around. So next I'm just going to use a detailed brush and I'm just going to slowly paint over the lines. Now the pencil mark will fade if you paint over it. And this part you just wanna take your time with. It did take me a little bit more time to do it, but it wasn't hard. I was able to do it just by going slowly and using my detailed brush. Once you get all of your details done, you can come back in with a small rolling brush and paint the rest of your pink paint. And I did two coats of the pink paint. For my hinges, I wanted to spray paint them in black because my hardware was black and so I wanted everything to match. So I just took them outside and did a little bit of spray paint on them. And I flipped them over and sprayed the other side as well. Once I was finally done with the painting, I was really happy because then I could move on to decorating and some more fun stuff. So the last step was just putting back on the outlet plates to the wall. Now at the beginning of the video, I showed you I had that long hallway where it's just mainly the toilet. So what I wanted to do above that was put in some fun shelves. So I picked up some really inexpensive shelving from Ikea. 
They have shelf supports pieces for $5. So I picked up four of them. And then I grabbed two of their white boards that were $2.49 each. They were a great size and they fit perfectly on my wall. I had Chris install the shelving for me. We just measured them so that they would be centered in the wall. And he used his drill to hang them on the wall. I also added in a black toilet paper holder. And we also put in a towel rack that was black. Both of these I grabbed on Amazon. Everything that I'm talking about, I will link below in the description box. So just click the little arrow down so you can see everything that I picked up. I also told you my daughter loves jewelry, so I needed something in here where she could organize her jewelry. I found this cool little wooden rack on Amazon and thought it would be perfect. So I'm just going to screw that into the wall. I think it looks great hanging up on the side of the mirror. The one thing that I splurged a little bit on, but it really wasn't that expensive, was a new light for her room. I just wanted something that was fun and cute and on trend. So I grabbed this light. Chris was nice enough to install it for me. Although he was a little upset when he realized that every single bead strand had to be connected up. So it was all right. He ended up getting it put up just fine but it's a really cute light and I think it adds so much to my space. I decided that I'm gonna keep the light fixture that's above the mirror. It's long and it just fits the space well, but I decided to get some different light bulbs. So I just kind of had regular light bulbs in there before. These light bulbs I thought looked a little bit modern. They're frosted and have a little glow to them. So I just picked these up on Amazon. I'll link them below if you're interested, but I'm gonna put those in the light. I decided to keep that existing light that was over her vanity. I know these lights are a little bit outdated, so I decided to update it just a little bit by getting some new frosted light bulbs off of Amazon. And I'll link the ones that I used below, but I just ended up getting 10 new light bulbs to use for this and replacing them out. Next, I'm gonna be working on the flooring. I grabbed these peel and stick vinyl tiles off of Amazon. They were really inexpensive. This package of, I think there's 10 in here and I got them for like, I think they were under $10. So I picked up three packs. I don't know if I have enough. If not, I'll just order another pack. I'm going to show you how I lay them out, give you some tips along the way, and hopefully they're pretty easy to put down. So with the tile, I really had to make sure that I got it lined up really perfectly. Sometimes it would take a little bit longer to make the cuts, but I found that if you cut a less amount, it's a lot easier than trying to put it back on. You can't put it back on. Some of the tiles actually had flaws in them. Like I noticed some of them had like this pink on them. So I wasn't really sure what that was about. In the end, I ended up using about five boxes to do my bathroom. And this flooring, I think for a package of 10 was around 11, $12. So really around $50, a little bit more to do a bathroom is a really good price for flooring. So I was happy with it. Um, I just put it right over my existing tiles and if I'm unhappy with it, I can take it up, redo it. I also save some tiles. So if I have one that gets messed up, I can pull it up and put one in its place.
A lot of the accessories for my bathroom I actually found at Walmart. I found this really adorable Walmart shower curtain that was white and black and I just thought it was so cute and I had to go with it and I ended up getting my other accessories from Walmart as well. Since this is a girl's bathroom I decided to go with some pink flower curtain rings and I also picked up my curtain rod at Walmart as well. I think it looks so cute. I decided to go ahead and steam mine just because the shower curtain is fabric. I mean, since it's in a bathroom, you really don't have to do that, but I was gonna be photographing it, so I went ahead and steamed it. So I decided I wasn't done painting. I wanted it to look more like a lace scallop trim. So I had this stencil brush that I had picked up at Dollar Tree and I thought wouldn't this be cute if I just did a dot in the center of these so it looked like a scallop border. So that's what I did. I probably should have used my wall paints, but honestly, my Waverly chalk paint was what I had on hand, so that's what I grabbed. And I just took that stencil and put it in the middle of all of my different little scallops. And I didn't measure them, I just kinda eyeballed it. They weren't perfect, but when you step back, it looks okay. I ended up doing two coats of white paint. I did have to go back in with a detailed brush and add a little bit more paint. But I asked Caroline, I said, do you like it with the dots or do you like it without the dots? She definitely liked the dots, so we went with the dots. So you guys will have to let me know, do you prefer the dots or the way it was before? I was at Ikea and I found these black hooks. They were only $2.99, I thought they were perfectly to hang up towels in the bathroom. I got a board that we just had sitting around our house and I had my husband cut it down into little squares. Next, I decided to take those squares and distress them. So I just kind of hit them with a tool that I had on hand, and then I sanded around the edges as well. To stain them, I used my favorite stain lately, which is the Vintage Effects Stain in Brown. And I did one coat all around it, and then I wiped off the excess. It wasn't necessarily the color I wanted. I wanted it a little bit darker. So all you have to do is do a second coat of the stain and wipe it off. That's what I love about this. I mean, it really, you can build color with this. So I let that dry. Then from there, I just had my husband put the hooks on the front of it and screw them into the wall. And I love the way it looks with these Walmart towels that I picked up that match the shower curtain. I just think these towels and the shower curtain are such a cute set. If you guys saw the beginning of the video, you would have seen this Mickey Mouse paper that was inside of the cabinets, and that was there from the previous owners to our house. So I wanted to pull all that up and put in new shelf liner. So I just grabbed a white shelf liner from Walmart, and I cut it down to size and put it in all of the drawers. So I picked up some black accessories for the toothbrush holder as well as the soap container that I just thought were so cute in this room where I have the blacks and the whites and pinks and they'll look really cute sitting out. Now 
Now to finish off my shelves above the toilet, I'm just going to use this Ikea basket, which if you guys remember a past Ikea DIY, I put this together. I'll link that down in the description box as well. The plant that I'm using is from Target. The sign that I'm putting in is from Legacy Home Decor. I'm also going to be adding in three Ikea jars that I picked up in the kitchen section. And all I did was spray paint the lids black and then just added in some cotton or just different things that you find in the bathroom. And the little basket I got from Ikea in a set of three. The other two baskets I'm going to put on the vanity with some flowers that I already had on hand. For the trash can, I already had this thrifted basket that I'm going to put in the corner. I'm also going to add this little table stool that I picked up from Anthropology, and I'm just accessorizing it with some towels and a plant and a few soaps. I think every little girl needs a little mirror for her bathroom, so I grabbed this one from Walmart, and I think it just looks cute sitting out. The hand towel matches the towel set from Walmart, and I also picked up the rug from Walmart as well. Here's a look at how the entire bathroom turned out. have to let me know what you think of this bathroom renovation and I hope I inspired you to renovate a space on a really tight budget and if you're new here make sure you subscribe so you don't miss any of our DIYs I'll link our last DIY so you can watch that next and I'll talk to you guys in our next one bye <laughs>